and gentlemen, a very good evening to the Honorable Dr. Muhammad Razif Abdurraza, Dr. Hazlin Sharudin, our guest of honor and also the speaker for today, Professor Muladi Mahamud, fellow students and distinguished guests. First of all, I would like to welcome you to this prestigious webinar entitled The Odyssey of a Cartoon Professor Muladi Mahamud. I am Sarah Olin and it is such a pleasure to be the moderator for today's webinar. I humbly thank you for participating in this webinar session for today. Before we begin, I would like to fill a little detail. This webinar series are held by postgraduate final semester students from the Faculty of Art and Design, UITM Shah Alam. This webinar will take about an hour and I hope you will lend me your ear during the whole webinar process. To ensure that this webinar is running smoothly, we would like to ask all guests to turn off your microphone and please note that due to the delay between Google Meet and Facebook Live, I would like to ask everyone to send their questions in advance in the comment sections so we will be able to relate to the speaker in our Q&A session later. Before we begin, I would like to invite Mr. Ahmed to recite the prayer. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Malik Yawm al-Din Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in Ihidina al-Sirat al-Mustaqim Sirat al-Ladhin an'amta alayhim Wairi al-Mawdubi alayhim wal-Dallin Ameen Allahumma laka alhamdu wa laka al-Shukr ala kulli ma qaddarta wa qadayt اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وسلم اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا اللهم عافينا واعف عنا اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا يا رب العالمين اللهم يسر أمرنا ويسر أمر دراستنا يا رب العالمين اللهم أني توكلت عليك وسلمت أمري إليك لا ملجأ ولا منجي منك إلا إليك اللهم لا سهل إلا ما قد جعلته سهلا لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أني كنت من الظالمين يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك استغيث إن يمسني الضر وأنت وأنت أرحم الراحمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي صلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وسلم آمين والحمد لله رب العالمين Thank you, Mr. Ahmed, for the beautiful doa. Now, we would like to invite our respective lecturer, Dr. Razif, to say a few words. Uh, thank you, Ms. Sarah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon, uh, professors, doctors, ladies and gentlemen. Shukur alhamdulillah and welcome to our sixth AD graduate seminar webinar session. Uh, last week, we have Datuk Rizalman as our speaker and the feedbacks we received uh, are just wow. Uh, well, today we bring uh, to you another special figure in the design industry, someone who is very close to the faculty and industry, someone is very important to the Malaysian art scene, especially in cartoons and comics industry, and also contemporary art. We are very honoured today as we, are, we have a very special Professor Dr. Mulyadi Mahmoud. Thank you, Prof, for your uh, con unconditional support uh, to our program. We uh, really appreciate uh, your commitment, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Uh, by the way, uh, to those who don't know, Prof Mulyadi was my supervisor during my honours degree and also my master's degree. Uh, I learned a lot from him uh, and always be thankful for the knowledge and encouragement uh, given uh, by him to me. Okay, by the way, to those who don't, uh, uh, by the way, Dr. Muladi uh, will always be the best role model for the lecturers. Thank you, Prof. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, for information, this sharing session is a part of uh, the activities in, uh, uh, in graduate seminar class. Normally, students uh, to organize this class uh, in a normal seminar, but in the current situation, due to movement control order, uh, of COVID-19, everything needs to be virtual. Uh, so this semester, we have no choice but to run the seminar online. Uh, I, believe in, uh, I believe that everything 
happens for a reason and if we take it positively what seems bad uh, at first might be in fact be something of a blessing uh, well i'm grateful to have a bunch of students who really want to take this challenge uh, to learn new things accept the norms push themselves uh, to make this webinar a success uh, for that i would like to take this opportunity uh, to express my gratitude to the organizing, uh, organizing committee uh, team for the commitments and the hard work in making the webinar session a success. Having said that, it is important uh, that we need to remind ourselves that this event should not mark the end of our session, uh, our efforts. We must work together, uh, unite, but always remember to keep the distance. Okay. <laughs> Finally, I hope that this seminar will be a very successful discussion uh, for everyone and I look uh, forward to the outcome of uh, the seminar. Uh, stay safe and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Razif. It is a chance of a lifetime to be able to invite an outstanding speaker to share his insights and knowledge for today's discussion. And now, I would like to introduce the speaker. Please give a warm welcome to our Honorable Speaker, Professor Muladi Mahamud. Thank you, Prof, for, for participating in this webinar today. Thank you. Now, let's take a moment to get to know our speaker, Professor Muladi Mahamud. Professor Muladi Mahamud is a former lecturer in Mali Editorial Cartoons, Art and Cultural Management, History of Art and Art Criticism in the Faculty of Art and Design, University of Technology, Mara, UITM, Malaysia. Anyway, Professor Muadi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Sarah. Alhamdulillah, thank you. It's delighted to know that you are well. Can you please briefly tell us about yourself? Sure, yeah, Sarah. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And very good uh, afternoon. Uh, yang saya hormati, Dr. Razim, Dr. Lin, uh, students, friends, uh, the organizing. Uh, technical teams you know thank you very much for this uh, invitation i'm really glad that uh, i'm here today as you know uh, i was actually i was born in batu pahat johor in 1961 but and then i grew up in felda ulu tembrau uh, which is about uh, 25 you know, from Johor Bahru. yes my family moved to that felda and uh, i'm happy to be here today because uh, i'm also actually an alumni of art and design I was uh, a student in 1980 to 1984. I was doing my diploma in fine art back then. And of course, then I was uh, also a teaching staff for the faculty at the faculty for uh, two years from 1989 until I retired uh, last year. So uh, I'm pleased to be here today and thank you for inviting me. I'm glad that uh, I have given this opportunity to say uh, some of my uh, story, life story, perhaps, you know, my journey as a uh, cartoon comic researcher. Thank you very much for the invitation. I hope you will enjoy my uh, sharing session later. Thank you. Back to you, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Mwari. It is also an honor to have such a humble professor with us. For those who are wondering, Mwari, Professor Mwari's major areas of research are the history of Malaysian cartoons and then Malaysian art. I must say, this is an intriguing course. All right, since we have heard about Professor Mwari's amazing background, let's kick start this webinar session with a few slides that Professor Mwari have prepared for us this evening. That being said, Professor, I would like to ask about your experience in the industry. How do you manage to get to this position? Do you mind sharing your journey as a professor in Cartoon State from the very beginning? Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, yeah. I was given this topic, the Odyssey of a Cartoon Professor. It is actually a very challenging topic, you know, because yeah, what I'm going to do is that basically I will uh, share my journey, you know, my journey as. Uh, as a lecturer, as a researcher in cartoon and culture studies. So, uh, I mean, I, I was trained as uh, an art historian. So basically, 
when you are trained as an historian, tend to present everything in you know, fact chronological uh, from chronological order. You know, that's what I'm going to do today. Is that I will uh, present my involvement in this area of studies by uh, using this chronological development. I'll consider the 70s to the 80s as my uh, formative era, the 90s as the productive era, the new millennium as uh, recognition era, and then later I will say some of my uh, recent works and current projects. My uh, interest in cartoons uh, actually started since my school days. You know, I was, uh, I grew up uh, in Felda Ulutubrau, so I went to Sekolah Kebangsaan Felda Ulutubrau from 68 to 73. And then I moved to Sekolah Menengah Ulu Tiram for one year in 74. But uh, in that school, you know, there was a, a, a teacher uh, named Cikgu Hafiz. I think, I think he saw maybe my potential and he advised me to move to a better school, you know, in, in Johor Bahru. So I moved to uh, Sekolah Menengah Amidin Baki Johor Bahru eh, from 75 to 79, you know. Apart from that, actually, uh, my parents, especially my father, I mean, he, he liked to read very much, you know, he, he liked art, he liked uh, hard, you know, and, and he, he liked reading, he, he liked politics, that's, that's why he, he, he bought a lot of books, you know, so we, we had like a mini library at home in which uh, we, uh, me and my brother and sister could actually refer, so I think it was my parents who actually set the environment in the house for us to be uh, interested, you know, in, in reading, in, in, in learning, and, and for me, in cartoons and, and, and art as well. Yes, this, these are the photo of my parents, you know, uh, taken back in 1986. Uh, my uh, father, uh, Mahmoud Sarjuno, and my mother, Haja Noriam Yusuf. My father, even though he was actually a farmer, a Felda said, but he was a very hardworking person. You know? He did a lot of uh, community uh, activities, you know, helping people. Uh, even though he was a farmer, at the same time, he, he was very interested in, in, in business. He started business of uh, selling uh, coffees, you know, and then, uh, and then he also went uh, a, a business of selling newspapers and magazine uh, in, in, in Pekan Ulu Tiram. So he was very hardworking and he was uh, uh, chosen as a representative of the Fetla, Felda settlers in my place, you know, because of his uh, involvement. He later was actually appointed as as a uh, representative of Felda settlers in the board of directors of, of uh, Felda. So I think uh, I could see that he was actually a very hardworking person. That really actually uh, inspired me, you know, to be also uh, hardworking and, and and be serious in in whatever that I'm doing. The seventies uh, and eighties I consider as my formative era. I started drawing actually in drawing cartoon in nineteen seventies. I started to send and publish my cartoons in, in entertainment magazines like URTV, Waria Pop, Kisah Cinta, Panorama, Utusan Film dan Fashion. You know, during that time, there were no cartoon magazines. Uh, as a cartoonist, we basically uh, send our cartoon to these entertainment magazines. So it's actually in these magazines that uh, that people uh, get to read our, our works, our cartoon, and that is also one of the source of, of entertainment. We didn't have uh, that much choice, you know. I also did a cartoon for my school magazine back in 1979. Uh, uh, maybe, Sarah, would you want to add something? Uh, you, you want to say something, Sarah, please? Yes, and I'm sure that you're not at all. I'm sure it is very tough to stay consistent mm. in a certain field, right? <clears throat> yeah. And I'm sure you have a long but beautiful journey. I must say that the struggle is real, but I also believe that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Every story has their own beginning, and even if the path is hard, we should still walk through it until the, the, until the end, because 
there is always something that makes us move forward. Mm -hmm. With this in mind, will you share with us what motivates you to keep going? Or is there any inspiration that influences you to do research or writing yes. about cartoons? Yes, yes. Yeah, actually, my uh, the so called early references and inspirations in cartoon were basically uh, those cartoons and comics that were published in local newspapers like Berita Harian, Berita Minggu, Tusan Malaysia, Minggu Malaysia. I really admired. Uh, cartoon by Lan, for example, like Keluarga Si Mamat, and uh, comic and cartoon by Raja Hamzah, ne? Keluarga Mak Jambul, which was actually an adaptation of British cartoon, The Gambles. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, there were also imported cartoons and comics uh, that were translated and published in, in, in local newspapers. So I I wrote cartoons carefully, you know, I copied the cartoon, I traced the drawing, you know, tried to improve uh, my drawings, you know. So I, I really admire the ability of all these cartoonists and comic artists, you know, the, the ability to draw, to publish, you know, to, to entertain readers in some sort of excitement. So I feel that I should be like that as well. So these are basically my uh, early references, you know. This is a cartoon by Lad, eh? Keluarga Simamad. It was actually made in 1979. I was so impressed eh, with the drawings you know i mean of course lad uh you know, his cartoons were created back in 1979 it's still popular nowadays i mean he could still uh sell a lot of products from these uh characters that he created you know almost uh what 40 years ago and another cartoon that i it was this by by raja hamza you know raja hamza was not only a a realistic comic artist, but also he did a lot of cartoons. This is actually an adaptation of the gambles, so it's called Keluarga Mat Jambul. And he also did this uh, comic strip called Kana, you know. Uh, the strip ran to like 500 series, you know, so every day you could read this uh, this comic eh, in the newspaper, so I was so impressed with the drawing the detail of the drawing and how it is presented, that really inspired me in terms of the drawing. And this is my first cartoon, you know. Uh, it was published in uh, URTV, Majalah URTV back in 77. It was a very simple and naive cartoon, you know. It's the dialogue between 2%. Eh? The boy eh, on the right is selling, uh, at that time, Gula Gula, you know, sweets with the brand Kiss Me. So it was asking him, this really machine. And he was saying, are you serious or just kidding, you know? So it was a very simple cartoon. But yeah, after all, it was published. And that became some sort of a catalyst for me to be uh, more interested and aggressive in, in drawing cartoons, you know? Uh, in 1980, I was actually uh, accepted uh, to do my uh, diploma in art and design in, in ITM, you know. So uh, during the first year, we, we were in, in Rungun campus. It was actually a very uh, memorable place, you know. I think it was the first time that I lived far away from my family. And it's the place where I met new friends from different states, you know. So it was, I think if you ask anybody, my, my friends, yeah, from of time they will say that wow Dungon was the best you know so i think uh the fact that i had managed to publish uh, a lot of cartoons in in lo local entertainment magazine i managed to compile all those cartoons into a portfolio so i believe that because of that because of this i was accepted to the uh, school of art and design you know and and then i was accepted to the fine art program in, in Sahara. So uh, my major at the time was uh, printmaking and I did minor in painting. Uh, during those uh, period in um, I managed to have my own series in uh, my cartoon series in, in Malay magazine, humor magazine called Mat Jenin. Eh? The, the story title Ragam Pedroka. It's about life of the Felda Celtics because I was from Felda. So my, my cartoon was about Felda 
Felda Fox, you know, how actually they uh, manage their life, the culture in Felda, and I also published a series called We Done Walk. Eh? It was and Mandurno, you know, Mandurno. I don't know how you translate Mandurno. And Mandur is actually someone who actually uh, monitor the workers in the plantation. You know? So it was published in Harian Esther. So being in Shahla, which is very close to KL, I was able to meet directly all those editors and publishers and ask them what kind of cartoons they, they like. So during, during that time, uh, I managed to actually have quite good sum of money every month, you know, by doing cartoons to buy art materials, you know, during my study. So this is my uh, cartoon in Majalah Mat Jenin, Ragam Perroga. I mean, you could see that my drawing was uh, tremendously improved after being uh, enrolled in, in ITM, you know. And uh, yeah, the story is about the life of, of Felda Settlers. During that time, there were only three humor magazines, Gila, Glihati, and Majenin. So Glihati and Majenin were considered as the rivals and competitors of, of Gila Gila at that time. This is a series called uh, Mandur Noh in newspaper called Aria National in 1984. We that was about two factory workers, girls, you know, uh, working in factory. So the inspiration actually came just from my surroundings, you know, from Felda, from Kilang, so all this uh, uh, pretty life. Uh, while I was in the ITM uh, student, I did participate in, in various art competition as well as... Uh, this is me in 1984 when I entered the cartoon competition organized by uh, the School of architecture so i won the first so it was it was uh, quite a memorable moment at that time you know uh, uh doing all these uh, cartoon activities <clears throat> yes sarah you yeah. want to comment something sarah yeah yeah that was very inspiring to all of us i hope people will keep those words in mind and embark their own journey there is a saying that the more successful people follow passion and not paychecks. And I believe even a professor has your own passion, right? Do you mm -hmm. mind sharing yes, with us yeah. how those passion for cartoons yeah. turn into writing and how it encourages you? Yes, yes. Yeah, I started as a cartoonist. Uh, then when I enrolled in, in UITM, uh, I, I did this diploma program. Even though at that time, in the 80s, our diploma is called Diploma in Art and Design, but it was considered as a general degree. It's a four-year program, four-year diploma program, but it is equivalent to general degree. So as a general degree student, you have to produce a thesis, you have to write a thesis. So uh, because of my interest in cartoon, and I was also a cartoonist, I chose a topic uh, about cartoon, you know? The topic was Sikap dan Sifat, Masyarakat Melayu dari kacamata kartunis Melayu Malaysia masa kini. Yeah, the attitudes of the Malay society from the perspective of contemporary Malay Malaysian cartunis. I was actually uh, supervised by uh, Prof Zulhaimi and, and uh, Prof Ponirin at that time. And of course, uh, all my teachers, other lecturers at that time were very helpful as well, you know. I mean, I could name one by one of them, you know. So, uh, yes, uh, I think what I tried to prove in this thesis is that I want to prove that cartoons and caricatures, uh, cartoon and cartoonists also have very significant roles in the, de in the development of society. Meaning that cartoon is not merely humorous or just for entertainment. So what I did is that it is actually a contextual study in which I drew try to understand cartoons and how they are actually related to the community, to the society as a whole. So it was actually from uh, this thesis that and then I started to publish uh, my writings in this paper like Udusan Malaysia and Harian National. So uh, this is uh, 
me during the diploma show uh, in 1984 you see there uh, my works base were basically very cartoon like approach at the back there you could see in the background my uh, uh my i was measuring in painting but uh, what i did was basically like uh what you call doodle you you could see actually this work in the collection of our gallery the gestures gallery and uh here are some uh, a photo of uh me and my classmate from fine art department back in 1982 this is me the lonely guy here there <laughs> at the corner there and if you know this is dr kamal actually this is uh usop kopratasan uh, uh, nasi from U, U, uh, upf they are all they were all in my class in 1982 it was a very beautiful moment you know uh, uh had the ability to study in ITF. this is actually during our trip our visit to the french uh, ambassador residency in kl you know during that time we had we usually had uh, outings, you know, do we did uh, paintings, watercolor outside, you know. So this is with uh, Chung Kam Kao, Dr. Chung Kam Kao. He was my, actually, uh, 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 lecturer in, in painting, sorry. And uh, you could see here, this is Prof Jai, young Prof Jai. And this is me, behind me is Rafi Igani. And this is Prof. Ismail Ibrahim from uh, UMS. So uh, we were all actually together uh, during that period. It was uh, yeah very interesting if you look at all this old picture. And uh, and uh, this is actually my first article that was published in uh, Harian National. It was actually based in uh, from my thesis, sejak lahir jadi senjata politik kritik meaning that the uh, Malay cartoon since since the beginning has been the uh, what you call this is uh, political weapon I mean you could see them by them uh, meaning that uh, when I was in the final year in IDM I, I had already started publish my uh, articles in this paper based on the thesis that I wrote this is another article published in uh, Utusan Malaysia Kartunis dianggap binatang politik yang melihat dengan mata burung. Eh, kartunis from the bird's eye view of kartunis uh, perception. <coughs> In uh, 1984, I received a scholarship, young lecturer scholarship uh, to do my uh, BA and master in uh, US. So I must then UITM, ITM, very much, you know, because they, I mean, gave me a lot of opportunities, scholarship, you know, place to study and further my study. So uh, it was actually in ITM, UITM, that really built my interest and career parts in, in cartoon and caricature studies. So I did uh, my uh, BA, History of Art in the University of Illinois, uh, Urbana Champaign. Then I moved to Ohio University in Athens, in which I did my a master in history of art and i try to be consistent in terms of my interest in cartoons even in the for my master thesis i wrote about picasso my thesis was about picasso as a cartoonist i think usually people would see picasso as a painter you know cubist and surrealist yeah? but i try to look him from from different perspective Picasso as a cartoonist. But uh, I think one of the most important uh, events during my stay in the US is this. The fact that when I was uh, in Ohio University in Athens, I had the opportunity to join this class uh, called uh, American Comic Seminar. It was offered, uh, taught by Dr. Gary Swindler at his 3535. So in this class, what we do is that what we did is that uh, we discuss about cartoons and comics, American cartoons and comics. We discuss the literature about comics, and at the end of the semester, what we have to do is that we had to draw some cartoons or comics and writings and compile them and publish as a magazine, which is called 401. 401 was actually referred to the room 
the classroom in which we met, you know, every week. So uh, the students came from different disciplines. There were students from mass communication. There were students from political science, from fine art. And of course, I was actually from uh, art history. But uh, one of the most interesting things is that uh, the perception towards cartoon and comic studies at that at the time, even uh, in the US, there is still a stigma uh, on cartoon and caricature studies, you know. People didn't, didn't really consider cartoon and comic as serious art form. Even uh, Dr. Swindler, when he introduced this class, he, he got a lot of criticism, you know, from the faculty as well as from the students who say that this class has nothing to do with art. Comics and cartoon have nothing to do with art. So, uh, Dr. Spindler just ignore them and say that there's bullshit. So he, he just proceed with this class. So I think that really uh, inspired me, you know, the fact that, oh, this is very interesting. So when I come back to ITM, I think I'll should start a class on cartoon and caricature studies. That's, that's one of the most important events that happened during that time. I think even the, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, when I was in the US, I still continue, you know, drawing cartoons and send my cartoons back to Malaysia and publish in magazines eh, like Gilihati. So uh, the, the, my cartoons was about life in the US, how a Malay, Malaysian student, you know, teenager, I eh, try to adapt to this new environment and the cultural shock, and the new environment. So that's why the, the series was called USA 101, and it was published in Gilihati magazine. But uh, I think one of the uh, important uh, moment during my study, and I think the, my journey as a, uh, what if you want to call it, as a cartoon researcher or scholar, but even my life was this, when, when actually I, I got married eh, to a French a girl called Bridget. So it was uh, on 26 November, yeah, 1987. So we just actually celebrated our uh, 33rd anniversary recently. It was in Athens, Ohio. So I think it was a very memorable moment, you know. And uh, I think I must thank um, all this Malaysian community during that time in Ohio who actually really uh, helped me in terms of organizing our wedding ceremony. It was like, wow, it was like a big ceremony at that time, you know. So. Uh, what is also important is that uh, Bridget at that time was actually a postgraduate study in French literature. So uh, I think she played a very important role in terms of my life, my journey, as well as uh, a strong supporter of my involvement in research, in doing research in cartoons. Sometimes we did a collaborative project. I will write in Malay, she would uh, translate into English and French. So. It's a good combination. So I, I really thank, thank her, you know, because of that actually uh, helped me in terms of my career part as well. Not only in life, but in terms of uh, professionalism. Yes, Sarah, you want to say something, Sarah? I find this very interesting. Like Professor Mwedi has said earlier, cartoons is, has a lot of stigma. And as compared to back then, has went through a lot of changes with the cartoons mm -hmm. that we can see today. And yeah. I'm sure that all of us can agree that Malaysian cartoon industry are doing their best in creating animation as grand as on the international level. Mm -hmm. Animations such as Upinipin, Bobo Boy, yeah. Yeah. and Agent Ali are all the proofs that this industry yeah. has taken cartoon into the yeah. next level. Yeah. 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 And I think as the jobs once said, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that everyone will go through a pop-up turns in their career. And as you started publishing books, what are the challenges in publishing a book on cartoons? Yes, Sarah. Yeah, I think uh, in order for an industry to develop, you know, like cartoon and caricature, there should also supportive uh, uh, what do you call this, some sort of uh, supportive backup uh, for the industry. I always believe that, you know, like cartoonists or the 
world of cartoon itself, there should be some academic input, you know, the historical background input that actually support the development of, of those art forms. That's why when I came back to ITM in 1989, I started this uh, uh, class on history of cartoon. I started teaching in ITM in AD in 1989. And in 1999, I introduced a topic on history of cartoons in art appreciation subject because it was actually uh, with the consent of the faculty and the department, you know. So I introduced uh, one topic, just a topic uh, in the class. So uh, meaning that the development of cartoon is not merely about the development of the art form, but it should be supported by the historical background, the theoretical background of the art form. But I think one of the most uh, important decisions that I made in the 1990s is that I stopped drawing cartoons and I focused on writing. That, I think, was a, a major decision you know, that I made because I think everybody in our journey in our part of life i think somewhere or another i think we're going to make a big decision i think the fact that i stopped uh, drawing cartoon it was a big decision that i made in the 1990 but the 1990 i considered as my productive era i stopped drawing cartoon because uh, i wanted to focus on writing you know i see that at that time there were not many art historians there were not many uh, writings, you know, in Malaysian newspaper, in, in, in the media. So I feel that it was my responsibility, you know. ITM sponsored me to do my uh, master BA in history of art. So when I came back, I should write. I should actually contribute in terms of this scholarship, you know, in terms of the art history scholarship. So it was like my responsibility, you know. After all, when you are an academic, I mean, you are not only teaching, you should also do research, you also have to write, you have to publish. If you are teaching studio works, so you have to produce artworks, you have to produce design. So I think it was our responsibility. So because of that, I, in the 90s, I involved uh, in, in writing uh, on arts uh, in local magazines like the one Budaya, Fantasy, Mastika, even uh, in these papers like the Sablesia and Ripi Harian, because I feel that I should actually fill this void, you know, in terms of the development of art in Malaysia. So uh, this is actually uh, an exhibition catalog of cartoons in 1989. It was the first major cartoon show at the National Art Gallery. I was invited to write in the book uh, with Dr. Christian Jean from UM. So my article was about cartoonist Malaysia, pelukis berperanan dalam masyarakat. Meaning that cartoon is the role, uh, or, or cartoonists have significant role in the society. It was actually a big moment for Malaysian cartoonists at that time, you know. We feel that uh, we are being acknowledged by this national institution, you know. The gallery, the National Art Gallery had this cartoon comic, caricature, exhibition. It was a big moment. So we really appreciated that. Now, I, I still remember at the time the director was uh, Datuk Syed Ahmad Jamal, the, the director of the National Art Gallery. So what I did is that uh, my thesis on Picasso, I extract some of the material from the thesis and I published in the One Budaya. This is actually my first article in the One Budaya back in 1989. Picasso sebagai kartunis. I mean, you could see that. Uh, Dewan Budaya was, I think, at that time, the only uh, source of materials on art. So when students were looking for reading materials, they will be looking at writings in Dewan Budaya. So I was so happy that I managed to publish uh, in this magazine. That really became some sort of a catalyst for me to go further from there. I still remember that uh, the editor at that time was uh, the late uh, Sutong Omar R.S., you know. And uh, I also did publish uh, my article in uh, Mastika. Mastika at that time was not like Mastika that you know today. It was actually a very academic magazine. It deal with uh, sociopolitical arts, you know. So, I mean, uh, I, I published my article in the magazine, as you see here. 
it was in 1989 the cover was the the focus was about datuk sri najib at that time benarkah pemuda no hilang taring you could see there datuk sri najib and datin rosmah manso they were very young and on the right side is actually by article about yusuf ghani i think it was my first article of yusuf ghani siri tari you know what published in mastika so i from there i didn't stop i just proceed and and do what i have to do and uh in uh, 1990 i started writing for gila gila magazine so meaning that it has been 30 years that i think for this magazine one day uh i met a uh, uh, you know, the CEO of Creative Enterprise, and then we had discussion, and he felt that there should be an academic input in Gila Gila. So meaning that we try to change the perception, the stigma on cartoons. A cartoon is not merely about uh, humor or entertainment, but it also have uh, significant in in developing in de developing the social life, the society. So from there, I started this article, Apa Itu Katun. Yeah? And one, when, what I did is that after a few uh, articles, I compiled those articles in the form of this photostat book, you know, which I used as class note in 1981. So those who came to my class, art and precision class, whenever we arrive at the topic of uh, cartoon i will actually sell this uh this uh, photo state copy notes to them you know so it became uh, a text at that time and also uh, had a column in fantasy fantasy was uh, majalah graphic malaysia was was also published with the price i had a column called appreciacy comic so every month i will like a comic that were pub that was published in the magazine and discuss about it academic academically so i think it was an approach to also uh uplift the the the, the, the status of comic into a discipline into uh, an academic en environment altogether another uh, important moment i think for me in my journey as a cut professor cartoon he want to label it you know it was this international cartoonist gathering in 1990. It was actually organized by Datuk Lad and his company, the Kampung Boy. So there were many cartoonists from from France, from the Philippines, from Thailand, from China, from Italy, from the US, who came to this uh, gathering. And in the book of the gathering, Datuk Lad mentioned that. Eh, considered me as a cartoon critic according to cartoon critic Mulyadi Mahamud. So it was like it was like an acknowledgement, you know, given by a, the top cartoonist of Malaysia during that time. So it really actually encouraged me, you know, to be uh, more positive, to be more involved in writing, doing research about cartoon, you know. I think uh, in in whatever field that we involve actually the support from our clicks, you know those who are in the same field that really help us to go forward that is actually what happened to me you know the cartoonists are, were very supportive you know they were uh, very interested to see the new uh, uh, direction of cartoons to erase the perception the negative perception uh, for cartoon as merely as a humorous art form in 1990, actually, I uh, we formed the uh, uh, Pekatun, Persatuan Cartoonists Malaysia. I was actually the founding president of Pekatun, the Persatuan. So together with Lad, Zunar, uh, Rajab Hart, Rosem, and some of the cartoonists, we formed this association, Pekatun, so we could have a channel in which all the cartoonists could meet, you know, and had our activities at the time most of the companies were actually attached to their companies different companies so i we thought we should have an avenue in which all of them could meet together so that's why you formed this association we we, we met at a creative enterprise office in bangsa utama 
so from there yeah you, uh, we had meetings we had workshop and forum this was actually the uh, second general meeting at the national art gallery at that time that lot lot was the president i was the vice president so in the middle there is Datuk, the late Datuk Zaki Hanam. She was the National Archive Director, but she was also the patron of the society at that time. And uh, in 1993, uh, my first book was published, uh, Dewan Bahasa dan Pustaka, Mendekati Sidi Lukis dan Sidi Reka. So uh, in this book, there were articles about art contemporary art modern art as well as cartoons you know so uh, it was the first book published by the ambassador so it was actually my first attempt to have uh, books on on that subject you know so it was uh, it was also a very important moment in in my career development <clears throat> in uh, 1994 i receive a staff scholarship, academic staff scholarship from ITM to further my uh, PhD. So uh, to do PhD in cartoon studies, you know, even though there were various perceptions and stigma and on cartoons, I think UITM had had a different vision. I think uh, the management had a different vision. I mean, they have a good vision, the fact that they, they, they could see that this area of studies could have a, a, a good potential in the future. I think the, the faculty realized that. That's why I was actually offered this scholarship. So what I did is that I went to further my study at the University of Kent in Canterbury at the Center for the Study of Cartoons and Caricature. So uh, I was supervised by two professors. One is uh, Professor Colin Simoyo. Uh, he was actually the Professor of Government and Cartoon Studies. And another one was Professor uh, Watson, who was an expert in Malay literature and Malay studies. So my topic was about Malay editorial cartoons, the development of style and critical humor. So my, my interest was basically on political and editorial cartoons. This is uh, me at the Cartoon Center in 19... 94, I was still quite young then, back then, so working in the center. All the collection of the center were actually uh, what we call the store in the database at the center. So when that we wanted to look for a cartoon, we just have to uh, uh, search in the database. During that time, the, we didn't have a good, uh, we still didn't have good online internet you know whatever so everything is in the database at the center so uh but if you wanted to see the real work they will actually take you to the archive and show you the work what was interesting during that time is that artists uh, there were many scholars there were many scholars from all over europe who came to the center to look for the cartoons eh, as their research material so cartoons was were considered as a primary data in which they use cartoons to support the argument or maybe to see you know the the society or certain issues from the perspective of cartoonists so it was it was very interesting it really opened my eyes you know in terms of how eh, cartoons should be uh, should be studied and viewed so even though i was actually uh, offered a scholarship and uh, to do my PhD in cartoon studies, but still the stigma on cartoon studies and caricature or comic uh, still uh, very negative, you know. Uh, cartoon was, was still considered as not serious, humorous, and only for and not only for entertainment, not only in Malaysia, but also in, in Europe at the time, you know. I, still remember that when i told my friends that i was going to a phd in cartoon one of them said that oh Mulyadi, when you come back we'll call you dr doremon so i was just uh, laughing at that time you know and during the reception of of a uh, new student at the university of ken i i met a lot of students from many different countries you know 
there was a student from Malaysia who did an engineering PhD in engineering asked me what can cartoon contribute to the society I'm doing engineering I could contribute a lot something like that but uh, I think one of the most interesting comment came from a PhD student engineering student from Saudi Arabia who came to me and asking me what I'm doing there what research that I am doing so I told him that I'm doing a research on political cartoons and then and, and he looked at me wow Mulyadi eh? you are dealing with a very dangerous subject so I I, I think I, I tried to quite a while what he wanted to say to me you know well, cartoons are dangerous subject and then I think I think he was actually quite right the fact that political cartoons were actually quite a dangerous subject I mean if you see throughout history you know the history of cartoons and eh? there were cartoons who were jailed because of there were cartoons who were jailed because of their cartoons Domier, PD4 in France you know even in 2015 the Charlie Hebdo cartoonists they were assassinated because of their cartoons eh? because of the cartoons of the prophet and of course as Zunar too I mean his books were were banned and he was also jailed you know because of his political cartoons so maybe it was right actually you know cartoon was a political cartoon was a dangerous subject but what was uh, I think important is that we have to look cartoon as a form of a very multidisciplinary art form you know it's not only visual art but it's also about media it's also about history it's all about politics so meaning that when you have to study about cartoons you have to think about all this uh, multidisciplinary nature of the art form you know it's not merely the the appearance of the cartoon but how it is actually related to the all the contextual environment when i was uh, in uh, in uk i still managed to publish books in malaysia this was my second book Sini Lukis Dalam Peristi was published by the Bahasa in 1995. And another one was uh, The Painted Garden by Rafi Igani. It was a book about Rafi Igani's uh, series of painting. I still remember that Rafi Igani came all over from Malaysia to visit me in England, you know, to in Canterbury to give this book when it was published. It was so nice of him uh, with his wife who came to visit me and my family and wrote this book you know here yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the book has been published so it was it was a very beautiful moment i think during that time yeah thank you rafi yeah and i was also uh, able to publish uh, some journals in in so this is in general about uh, my thesis you know i think nowadays if you are a postgraduate student phd before going to Baiva, you have to to publish in refereed journal at that time in 1997 it was not a requirement but but uh, i managed to publish you know by the invitation of the national university of singapore by this is and uh, when i came back from uk in 1997 i continued uh, teaching in art and design it and i was i think i was considered myself lucky because from the start of my career in 1999, I was never transferred to any campus campuses. I was stationed there in the Sahara. So I think it was, uh, it was lucky. So uh, I think uh, there are certain issues that I, that I faced uh, when I came back in Malaysia, even though I had already a PhD in cartoon studies, but still it was, it was a great challenge to publish books about cartoons you know first you have to find uh, publishers who were interested in your in your work I remember that I published my book because I couldn't find any publisher and then I finally decided that I have to publish my book by myself and then I tried to sell my book it was so difficult it was so difficult to market the book I went to a bookstore in Salam I met the manager and I told him that I wanted to sell this book. Can you put this my books on cartoon in this in your kedai in your bookstore? He was looking at me, you know. Why? What? You writing about cartoon, you know? Who want to read books on cartoon? Nobody wants to buy book about cartoon. I was 
I was a bit hurt at that time, you know. It was so difficult. So uh, what it is, yeah, I have to say about this. Maybe we print on demand whenever students want to buy the book, I print, you know. So uh, use the book as a textbook and reference book. But, but the most difficult thing is how to market them, actually. These were the two books that I self-published, printed by Universal, Universal Press in 1999. Pengantar uh, Seni Lukis Kartun, Kartun dan Kartunis. Yeah? And I also managed to uh, publish a book on art history, which was used as a tag in the faculty. So even though uh, my main interest was about cartoon and caricature as well as comic, but I still uh, wrote a lot about uh, art history, contemporary art and modern art. So those are some of the, I think, challenges that I faced, you know, when I came back from Malaysia. Still, I mean, it is actually quite difficult to change the perception of the public, you know, uh, towards cartoon and caricature studies. Yes, Sarah, you want to say something, Sarah? Yeah, and as I can see that you have went through a lot of hardships. Yet, I am very sure that it is also a very rewarding experience. That is such a great spirit. Besides, in today's world, based on what we just heard, I'm sure it is as equally distressing as it is now. So we have to grasp every opportunity we can get. So, since you have been working in this industry for so long, is there any memorable moments that make you feel grateful for what you have achieved? Yes, Sarah, yes, thank you. I think uh, the new millennium, the year of 2000, I considered this period as my recognition. Uh, you know, after the year 2000, I after came back from UK, 1997, the year 2000, I, I think I received a lot of recognition in terms of my expertise you know i was invited as uh, as a curator guest curator for many galleries i was also invited as guest writer i was also appointed uh, in uh, various arts and cultural panels and committee in 2008 uitm appointed me promoted me as professor of cartoon studies and big scholar i was also uh, appointed as a national visual art development board by an art expert for jabatan warisan negara i was also uh, appointed as examiners editorial board as well as representative for the cartoonist right network international based in, in the state but i think uh, what were also important in terms of achievement is that the fact that i uh, managed to supervise and succeed eh, supervising students, master postgrad students who were doing research about cartoons and comic studies as well as modern and contemporary art. I think those are those uh, those are actually big significant achievement for me. You know, the fact that I managed to uh, instill the interest of students in these studies and also was awarded as uh, National Academic Awards in 2012. But I think uh, some of the memorable event, events, you know, and, and, and activities that happened in the 2000 onward was, was, was this. The first one was this. Actually, I was invited by uh, Petrodas Gallery to curate a show of new work by Said Ahmad Jamal, you know, the National Art Laureate. Datuk Syed Ahmad Jamal, eh, his work, a new series, Antara Langit dan Bumi in the year 2000. I was actually uh, very honoured eh, to be uh, appointed, to be working with him, you know. He was he was a great guy, Syed Ahmad Jamal. He was uh, not only an artist, but he was actually a philosopher, a scholar, art historian. He was art manager, you know, director of National Art Gallery. He was a great artist, so it was actually a, a good opportunity. You know, it was uh, an honor to be working with him. I learned a lot from him during our meetings, you know. Then I was also invited by him and Ewan Bahasa to review his book during the launching of his uh, uh, autobiography, Kunang Kunang, Kenang Kenangan, in the year 2000. You know, 
he was a very humble person. He was very easy to approach, you know, this uh, Sayyamah Jamal. And from there, I did uh, some other projects with him. He invited me to write a few chapters on modern art and cartoons in uh, Encyclopedia of Malaysia Craft and the Visual Art. And I think one of the, also one of the most important uh, event took place in the year 2000, you know, was this. I was actually uh, invited by my cartoonist friend, Zuna, you know, to write an introduction for his book, Lawan Tetap Lawan. I think this was his uh, third book, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, third book. The year 2000 was a critical point in Malaysia political history you know, because it was considered as a period of political reformation you know uh, Anwar Ibrahim Datuk Sri Anwar was actually sacked from AMNO and the government from uh, in 1999 so even after that created hmm, some sort of political instability the emergence of uh, many uh, opposition papers in Malaysia the emergence of I guess stronger opposition parties. As you know, that uh, most of Zunar Katus were very critical of the government. It was very critical of the government. You know, then uh, he invited me to write uh, for his uh, for his book in an introduction. So I I I think quite deeply about his invitation because I realized that actually I was uh, working with. UITM, and this is university, this is a government university, you know. What if I write something in a book that were very critical of the government? So those are the things that I had in, in my mind at the time, you know. But uh, after some time, you know, I, I accepted his invitation because I believe that as an academician, you have to be uh, objective in what you are doing. And you have to do it from academic point of view. And what I did is that I tried to study uh, Zunar's cartoons in terms of the style and how actually I could locate Zuna in the context of Malaysian cartoon history. I think one of the tasks of, of an art history is, is how you could locate an artist in the context of a bigger frame, bigger picture of the whole history. So I, I accepted uh, this invitation. This is the cover of the book. Lawan tetap lawan. Eh? So the kata aluan by oleh Dr. Mulyadi Mahmud. But uh, the next day after the launching of the book, and then suddenly my my photo with all these opposition leaders, you know, were published on front page on the uh, newspaper Haraka, the opposition newspaper. I mean, you could see that there. uh, there's me holding holding the book. This is Azmin Ali, Dato Azmin Ali, he was actually a PKR uh, MP at that time, Zunar and Dato Nasruddin from PAS. PAS was actually an opposition party during that time. So, uh, I mean, you could see the caption there. Uh, beside Azmin Ali, Adun Hulu Klang, Dr. Mulyadi Mahmud, satu-satunya pemegang Dr. Falsafah, PhD dalam bidang kartun di rantau ini. Dr. Mulyadi telah menulis kata-kata dalam buku Zuna kali ini. So it was it was a very memorable moment actually. But because of this, I think uh, I was called by the dean, you know, to explain my involvement in this event and my writing because I think there were reports, uh, uh, there were reports sent to the dean that I was actually involved in these uh, activities. I think some people labeled me as opposition supporters you know so i was called by the dean to explain eh, my involvement so i just i just told the dean that i was doing my job i i'm writing about political cartoon this is my area of expertise i'm just doing it from academic point of view how i could actually educate the public in terms of understanding political cartoons you know? So at the end of the meeting, the, the, the dean told me, oh, okay, okay, Mulyadi, you were at the wrong place at the wrong time. So that was actually uh, quite a significant event, I think, in my uh, career development, you know, because uh, it really 
uh, uh, taught you the fact that as an academician, you have to be very objective in what you are doing. I mean, you have to be very objective in terms of your writing and your research. This is me with Zuna in 2012, during the launching of his book. In 2004, I was, uh, I was uh, invited by the National Art Gallery to curate this large retrospective with uh, Reza Piadasa, the late Reza Piadasa. It was actually an honor for me to be able to be working with uh, an important uh, art historian, Reza Piedasa. I learned a lot from him during this process, you know. He advised me a lot in terms of how I could approach the writing, how to manage an exhibition. You know? It was it was very interesting. I, I feel that I was honored to be able to work with him. And uh, during that time, actually, my book just came out from uh, uh, this publication. It was actually based on my thesis. The history of Bali editorial cartoons. The book was the script was first. Uh, actually, the publisher didn't agree to publish, but I had to prove to them. I had to come up with a proposal that this is an important subject. And finally, the book was launched by Lad during this exhibition in two thousand four. And after that, I never stopped. I continue writing on Malaysian art. So I published a book on Sri Lanka's modern Malaysia, modern Malaysian art. Uh, it was published by Udusan and reprinted several times. And it was also, uh, I managed to get grants from the Purpusaka Negara and the books were uh, distributed all over Malaysia, Malaysian libraries. And this book was published by Dewan Bahasa, but uh, this is the book that took so long to be published. I submitted the manuscript in 1999. It was only in 2007. Eight years after that, then the book came out. So meaning that in order to be a writer, sometimes you have to be very patient. You know? Some book could be published in one year, but there are books that could be published, published after 10, 8 or 10 years, you know. That's why I think nowadays people writers are more interested to say publish their book rather than waiting for publishers and i did curate uh, some other shows like this awang damit at the national art gallery Gerasa rasa was an exhibition of art and design alumni graduates in national art gallery i did publish a book on yusuf gani segera uh, at the art case gallery so uh, it was very nice to be working with Yusuf Ghani. And uh, yeah, a book on Sarifah Fatima published by National uh, no, NN Gallery. And at the National Gallery also I curated a show for a Joho artist. Raza Abdullah, Chandan Gallery, National Art Gallery on Sadi Maddum. And another important show that I think I curated was Tamandu uh, Rani. Napas Kesenian Islam dalam seni contemporary Malaysia uh, in Gallery Petronas in 2012 and uh, book on Rafi Igani, Jenny. And uh, in 2010, I took a sabbatical leave one year from ITM in which I was I managed to publish uh, books on cartoon, anthology of articles, today cartoon from Gila Gila from the year 2000 to 2010, meaning that after 10 years, I compiled all those articles and published as a book. And then I received a research grant from uh, Kementerian FR FRGS Research to publish this book, Cartoon Editorial Melayu, since 1990. It was actually a continuation from my PhD research. And uh, I think I also actively involved in uh, cartoon activities in Malaysia. I was uh, invited for a forum sometime with Lat, in this picture with Lat, uh, Gayo, the cartoonist, as well as Faisal, comic artist. In 2012, I curated a show, cartoon show, Pameran Tulen, Malaysia, in the National Gallery. So, Professor John Lamb from Temple University, he, he is actually 
a cartoon, a well-known cartoon and comic scholar, you know, and he came to visit me. I think uh, with John Lenn, uh, he actually introduced me to many uh, uh, international scholars. So he was, he was like, it's not only a friend, but he's also like a mentor to me, you know, because uh, because of his connection, his networking. I managed to do uh, many collab collaborative projects with him. Some of them are this book, Animation in Asia, in which I wrote about the history of Malaysian animated cartoon, book edited by him, so this Asian cartoon on LAD. And I was also invited uh, by him to sit in this uh, international editorial board of Comic Journal, International Journal. So those of you who are actually interested in research about comics and cartoons, you should get in touch of this uh, journal uh, online as well as in our library. Yeah, we, we have this this uh, journal in Osaka and Raza. And uh, another interesting point in my development was I was invited to this uh, meeting of Cartoonist Right Network International. It actually an international organization to protect political cartoons who are in trouble. It is based in the US. I was invited with Zuna to this meeting. The purpose of that meeting was try to formulate an international organization to be more effective in helping those cartoonists who are in trouble with their governments because of their cartoons, you know. So it was very interesting to meet all these cartoons. And so during that meeting, I also met Prof. Len again, and I also met the American editorial cartoonist, Carl, who was actually the bone director of that meeting. And Dr. Robert Russell was the founder of the organization is in Ohio State University. And uh, during that meeting, there was also an association of American Editorial Cartoonist Convention in which all these political and editorial cartoonists from the US meet you know, every year in this convention. But I was opportunity to attend a forum of uh, during that convention. The forum was discussing about uh, the direction of Western American cartoons, you know, post Charlie Hebdo, as you know that in January 2015, a few uh, Charlie Hebdo cartoonists were assassinated because of their cartoons. So, so it really shook the uh, the, the direction of uh, of American and European cartoonists. So they were discussing about that, about their direction. Some of them believe that they should proceed with what they are doing because they are the one who champion the freedom of speech and freedom of expression. But some of them believe that in this new era and millennium, we should also consider other cultures because cartoon nowadays are not merely for local consumption or local audience, but it is actually uh, global in nature, attract global audience. You know, it was very interesting. But at the end of the seminar uh, the conference, there was no unification in terms of opinion. They were still actually looking for solutions. And uh, 2015, 16, I managed to publish these two books on cartoon and cartoonist in Malaysia and a research on Gile Gile, 30 years of Gile, the development of the style of the cartoon. It was published by ITBM and it was reprinted. So it was it was very good, meaning that people started to realize that cartoons are not simply humorous, but cartoons do have special roles in the society. I was uh, invited to talk about my work at the Star Buku in 2016. And yeah, I think the new millennium uh, was very significant in terms of recognition to my involvement. I was uh, uh, what do you call this? Yeah, awarded the Toko Cartoonist Intellect by Pakatun. I was also awarded uh, Toko Pangiat Cartoon Malaysia by the Prime Minister in 2012. And 
anugerah akademik negara National Academic Award in 2012 as well as tokoh pegiat komik Malaysia in the 2018 this are some of the photos tokoh pegiat kartun you know it was uh, presented by our former prime minister Datuk Najib Razak 2012 this is a National Academic Award 2012 receiving award from uh and then the uh, deputy prime minister uh, now our current prime minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin and with uh, families and friends during the award ceremony you could see there Rosal the handsome uh, Encik Jojo was also there Professor Kavi and my friend it was a very beautiful uh, moment and 2018 I received this award Toko Panggiat uh, Comic Malaysia and uh, when I was uh, in the board of directors of National Art Gallery I was also launching the show population caricaturist exhibition so these are some I will talk again about my current work so I think Sarah wants to say something yes Sarah please yes I find this very insightful and very inspiring as well it reminds me of the saying that says um, after the rain, there will always be rainbow. After a struggle, there will always be a happy ending. Even though it was a long journey, but Professor Maladi has proven to us that nothing is impossible in order to achieve success. Even as the world evolves, as human, we can never be left out in the cold, especially when it comes to careers because it is considered a competition. This is there any current project or books that you have been working on? Yes, yes, uh, Sarah. I will say some uh, images from my recent work. Recently, I was recently uh, appointed or invited by uh, Rosem to be the head of June, the international cartoon competition organized by uh, BKR as well as the gallery, the Kelantan State Gallery. Pemeran kartun antara bangsa. It was it was a very interesting uh, competition. Yeah, the team was safe. What was amazing is that how actually Rosem could attract so many participants from all over. The world. There were 188 cartoonists from 44 countries who participate in this competition organized by him. So I think. I really appreciate how actually Rosem was a very hardworking cartoonist. He not only cartoonist, but was also he he is also a, an art manager. You know, he owns this gallery, so a cartoon has a special place in the society. I really appreciate that and respect his work. And I also uh, I was also invited by. South East Asian, South East of now General of National University of Singapore to write about my experience of teaching art history. So what I did is that I wrote my involvement in teaching political cartoons in, in UITM. So the topic of the essay was teaching a dangerous subject, the history of Malay political cartoons. I was actually very happy the fact that Nowadays, uh, these course cartoon and caricature studies are being taught in the faculty, especially in the uh, visual culture studies department. So I think uh, by the courses in our faculty, it is really uh, an acknowledgement about the discipline in the visual art. So I think, I think art and design has been the benchmark uh, we are always in front of others so i think i think that's what we are doing so i am very happy about that so uh i still uh write for gila gila since 1990 and i occasionally publish my article in dewan budaya this one was about usin Hormon. my some of my current projects now is that uh i'm writing a book uh with uh, some scholars from the state Hong Kong and Asia. The book called Transnationalism in East and Southeast Asia, Comics Art. This will be published next year by Palgrave Publication in the UK. 
it was actually the outcome of this uh, conference that we had uh, in Chinese University of Hong Kong on transnational cultural flows, diaspora and identity in Asian comics. Uh, this is, yeah, during that conference, I had the opportunity to meet Prof. Lan and some other scholars from Singapore, uh, Ling Cheng Ju and professors from the Philippine University as well as from Indonesia. So it's, it's, we meet there and then we discuss the direction of the degree. And another interesting thing is that I was invited to write an essay of history of Blazing Cartoons to be used as part of the uh, formation of gallery and rumah lad. So I think this is another in interesting, uh, important project in the development of Malaysian cartoon, you know. So the gallery and rumah lad in the uh, Kampung Gajah, uh, in Batu Gajah, in Ipoh, it was supposed to be launched this year, I think because of the island that is, has been postponed maybe to next year. This is me uh, during the site visit of La Mahakata. And I was actually attending a forum at Port last year and then Lad was there. And yeah, he invited whoever wanted to visit the site. So I was, I had the opportunity. I was feel very, I feel very lucky the fact that I managed to visit the, the place. And I'm sure that this is going to be another important landmark in Malaysian history of cartoons. And I'm also working for a solo show of uh, Awang David Ahmad, Garis Mega, his solo uh, exhibition. It was supposed to be this year, but because of the COVID-19, it was also postponed to next year. It's going to be in uh, KL and Bangkok. I'm not sure if there is any changes. I think from our will let us know. And I'm also working for a uh, write-up for uh, Ali Nur Azmal project, Last Man Standing at the National Art Gallery. Eh? So the book is still in the printing press, I learned. This is uh, the essay about him. And I still continue writing for uh, Iwan Budaya sometimes, you know. And of course, uh, I have a regular column in uh, Gila Gila, yeah, the Nekatun. So I think uh, I think uh, I'm really pleased and grateful the fact that my journey as a uh, you want to say a cartoon professor or cartoon scholar, even though there were a lot of uh, challenges yeah, in the beginning, you know, towards the end, but I I'm happy that I managed to still uh, contribute yeah, to the development of the art form so because uh, because i i believe that we are all actually current cultural players you know whether you are a decision maker you are in the government whether you are an artist or designer whether you are a moderator i considered myself as a moderator because i'm a writer that i try to moderate and to relate cartoonists artists artwork and the society that is moderated the role of a writer the role of a uh, critic, journalist, you know, and you are just an audience. You know? So we all have our role to play, you know. If you are an audience, how can you be a knowledgeable audience, you know? So decision maker, if you are a decision maker, how you could actually help the country move forward in terms of uh, the development of art, one of cartoon itself. So uh, I feel that I had this responsibility you know to educate i think that really uh i guess encouraged me to move forward even though i'm retired now i'm still uh, writing i'm still uh sometimes contacted by students to get advice so that is actually a yeah, part of i guess my responsibility yeah so that what keeps me going the fact that writing is about educating people you know and uh, I think all of this have to be done uh, with full of integrity. Integrity is a big word, you know. You have to be amana, you have to be trustworthy. You know, these are all the things that you have. Of course, in, in academic exercise, integrity is very important. And you have to work hard, you know, you have to be very consistent. Yeah? Even though whatever challenges come, you have to be very patient. You know? 
and you also have to be proactive, meaning that you have to look forward what to prepare, you know. If you are interested in cartoons, how can you be proactive in terms of collecting all the data, all the samples, for example, you know. And uh, finally, I think cartoon is a, is a very multi-discipline study. Yeah? You have to, I guess, uh, look at cartoons from contextual point of view, meaning that looking at the cartoon net, not only visual, in, uh, visual appearance, but how actually cartoons are related to the society, to the environment, to the socio-political context. Then, uh, then you could see the fact that it is not merely about humor, but it is also about uh, culture and many other things. Yeah? So I think it's a very long journey. Uh, uh, I think uh, I could not do actually all this thing alone, you know. So uh, I would like actually thank the, the many people actually who helped me in my journey. Of course, uh, uh, thanks to Allah, eh? Alhamdulillah, eh? because I managed to arrive at this place, you know. And I think, uh, yeah, I think ITM, eh, UITM has, uh, has actually helped me a lot in terms of my career of development, eh, providing me with uh, scholarship, you know, with space. Eh, these are all actually helpful. And of course, uh, my teachers, my lecturers, you know, my family, my parents, uh, as well as colleagues, friends, cartoonists, artists, you know, uh, publishers. Students, you know, your students are actually uh, very important, you know, because they really become like your catalysts, you know, they, they inspire you. Sometimes when you talk to students, you get new ideas, you know. We are all in the process of learning, you know. So even though you are a teacher or you are a lecturer, eh, uh, you, you will learn a lot of things from your students as well. So I would like to thank to all of them actually to... Uh, because of their commitment, because of the support, you know, I managed to space. And so I hope you you actually enjoy my, my presentation. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you, Professor Mulyadi. We do find it very, very enjoyable to hear you share your experiences. And I would also like to add that your upcoming works and projects is very exciting. We are eagerly waiting for those works to be done. I wish you the best of luck, Professor. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I hope students are satisfied with the inputs given in this webinar and take notes from it. Now, we are opening the floor for the Q&A sessions. We have been bombarded with questions from the audiences. The first question is from Aina. As a senior in cartoon industry, what are the hopes for the future of the cartoon world in Malaysia? And are there any advice for the future cartoonists? Okay, uh, thank you, Sarah. I think that that is a very important and critical question of the future, the hope and direction of cartoons. I think uh, it is always very important that we revisit our history. You know, we try to learn from history, eh? try to look back in terms of the history of our cartoons, what were our success story? What were our failures? You know, so we, we learn from that. I think also by studying the current situation you know, in terms of what are the demands of the of the markets now, you know, the style and the technique that could actually help us in terms of planning, in terms of uh, setting our uh, direction. But of course, in cartoons, there are many types of cartoons, you know. You're talking about editorial cartoons, political cartoons. You're talking about comic strip, strip cartoons. There are also animation. So meaning that when you are involved in this area of specialization, you have to really understand and identify your, your discipline, you know. You have to know the technique. You have to know the trick. You have to understand the audience and the target readership and target audience. Because uh, I think now we are actually working in a different environment altogether, you know. It is totally different from 10 to 20 years ago, in which we actually depend on the printed 
publication. But now you're talking about online publication and you're talking about social media. You are talking about a larger and, and bigger audience, a global audience. It's not really about local audience. So all of this, all of these things that you have to actually take into consideration in your in your of uh, doing things, you know, I meaning that you have to know your discipline. You have to do research, you know. You have to do research. You have to do research. Research is very important. It's not only for students, also for practicing artists and cartoonists. But I, I do hope that. There will be more recognition, you know, for uh, cartoonists and comic artists in terms of maybe uh, the institution that 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 acknowledge the art form and the and the art. Right now, we have Balai Cartoon Rosem, we have Penang Comic Artists, we have Rumah Cartoon and Comic Malaysia in KL Taman Bonani. Soon we have Rumah Lat. So I do hope that there will be more institution that actually. Uh, acknowledge and, and, and appreciate cartoons. Perhaps the National Art Gallery could play also an important role in having a set of, of cartoon arts, you know, not only on contemporary and modern art, because I think that is also uh, quite important. Perhaps there should be more budget allocation in terms of acquisition of the artworks, not only modern and contemporary artworks, but why not collect cartoons in in our national art collection i think those are the things that maybe we could think in terms of go forward in terms of uh, the success development of cartoon and characters as well as comic thank you sarah yes that is an outstanding advice and really helpful for the youngsters as they might need it in the future next questions that we have is from shatila leo she asks what platforms can youngsters refer to if they are interested in writing about cartoons? If there is any aid in this career, or maybe you yourself can help to guide them? Okay, okay, that's very interesting. I'm good to hear that uh, that people, students are interested in cartoons. That's that's a victory. Okay, uh, I think uh, I think uh, it is very important with survey. You know, do literature review do survey about uh, the direction literature review about the direction of of cartoon studies or comic studies you know did this could be done by of course i mean you could search on google scholars there are thousands billions of writings about comic art you know you could also uh, uh, uh you could also as i mentioned to you just now uh, International Journal of Comic Art could also be the platform that you could start with by looking at what are the trends of of uh, uh, of cartoon studies now. But I think it is also to uh, it is also important to what types of writing are you talking about? Are you interested in uh, doing academic writing, or are you interested in doing? Uh, articles or is it going to be uh, published in journals is it going to be published in newspapers these are all about the things that you have to consider in the first place the, your, your target readership it is very important too so i think as far as uh, as far as doing research about cartoon i think that what is uh, if you are enrolled as a, a student in the university or in college it's good because you have a uh, supervisor that could guide you and there are also grants that you could apply that you have to do collaborative work with your supervisor there are fundamental research grant there are also grants like from my creative venture Chandana, you know these are all the things that could actually help you in terms of starting uh, writing about cartoon but uh Sometimes it doesn't really matter whether you are majoring in visual art or you are majoring in politics or social science in art history. You could always channel your research or interest in studying cartoons from the perspective of those disciplines. How cartoon is actually perceived from uh, 
communication media, how can it perceive from cultural point of view? So meaning that it doesn't have to be in the discipline part, it could be from other discipline that you could still focus on on uh, the study of cartoon, writing about cartoons. Uh, and of course, nowadays, uh, there were universities and colleges that offered the degrees in cartoon studies. Like Ohio State University, they have a very good museum, cartoon museum, in which you could actually refer all these materials. Of course, in Ken, the place where I studied, there were also a lot of material. So uh, there are many choices, you know. As long as you have that interest, you could actually study cartoon from whatever points of view. It is very multi it's very contextual. Yeah, of course, I'm, I'm willing to have, as I told you, even though I'm already retired, I still receive call, WhatsApp from my students, you know, asking me for advice. Yes, I will actually do some of that. But of course, as I'm already retired, I have to also respect uh the, your supervisors you know i can give opinion but it is very important that you work together with your supervisors you have to see your supervisors regularly and get their advice eh? as as a person i could always help you in terms of giving you advice in some direction but the decision is you and your supervisor thank you sarah for uh, i hope it it answers uh, the question Yes, it does, Professor. And I hope those people will be able to secure their research and remember this. No plagiarism. It's better to start slow rather than cheating, even if it's hard. And we also have questions from Adli. What is the best you could give to anyone in terms of life in general? Wow, well, this is a very tough question, Adli. Yeah? <laughs> okay, I think, uh, well, What's your, how should I answer that? Yeah? I think uh, I think first everybody has their belief, you know. I think as a Muslim, I think religion is the most important thing in your life. Yeah. So I think you should not only put your family, but it's also your religion that is the most important thing. Yeah? Family is very important to roll after we do all the hard works, you know. At the end of the day, we will come back to your family. So it is very important to have a good family. And as a person, I think, as a person, I think in your career development, I always like this book written by Kobe, you know, the, what they call this, uh, the uh, seven attitudes of the most successful person. It is quite interesting, you know, sometimes this kind of motivation uh books you know so you have to be among others you to be proactive in what you are doing you know you have to be proactive in order to be successful you know proactive in whatever that you want to achieve proactive in whatever that you like and think about what is the end product you know what is going to be the result of this thing and you have to Put first thing first, eh? what is the most important thing? Put the priority. Think win with, you know, thinking about yourself, but at the same time, you have to also think about the others. How can you actually uh, make yourself successful? And then at the same time, the people around you also uh, successful. And then uh, you also have, I guess, uh, to. Uh, improve yourself eh? from time to time try to maybe cooperate with others you know and always improve your skill and ability yeah? those are basically maybe your career but in terms of as a person i think yeah i think religion is very important health is very important parents are very important these are all the person the people that are actually around you that you should actually uh Put your priority because at the end of the day is it's your family you know that is actually my suggestion thank you professor Muradi. and i honestly 
agree with it. We have to know what's important and keep close to it. And there's another question by Nina Yusrina. She asks, I would like to know your thoughts about whether people nowadays still have enough appreciation of our local comic scene amidst the changes in media, such okay. as the traditional media to digital media. Is it still possible to publish a comic independently during these hard times? Yes, I think that is a very interesting question. You know, this is the thing that uh, we actually among Katanese always uh, discuss, you know, whether uh, we could still publish the printed version of comics and cartoons, you know, because of this uh, uh, social media, people are turning towards online and, and digital uh, publication, you know. So uh, it's possible. It is possible. And in fact, uh, there are many of my cartoonist friends actually publish their work in the printed version. Uh, what they are doing is that they do their work online on Instagram or media social, but at the end of the day, they compile them and publish as a third book. The fact that they had managed to publish on social media, they had managed to gather a lot of readers and audience and fans, you know. By doing that, actually, they were successfully promoted their product. So when the product are published as a book, so they already have bias, actually. So meaning that you, it is still possible uh, to publish the uh, printed material. I. I still remember I read a thesis by by Siri, cartoonist Siri. He actually a uh, lecturer at MMU University. He did research about uh, what do you call this? Eh? About marketing eh? of of uh, comics. So among other things, uh, uh, he said that uh, to publish uh, books on cartoon, you have to think. Uh, some factors like the affordability, eh? the price of the product. You have uh, to think appeal of the of the work, whether it could attract uh, readers or not, and then the accessibility, whether it is easily uh, 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 provided, uh, whether uh, it is emotional that it could attract uh, readers or not whether it is collectible. I think in the context of printed, I think uh, now the culture of collecting comics and, and graphic novels are getting popular. People start to buy comics to, to be part of their collection. I heard that the first issue of Gila Gila would be sold for 5,000 ringgit nowadays, you know? So meaning that there is still market. So perhaps we have to think what kind of printed version of comic. You have to actually identify who are your target and target buyer. I think it's good if we could produce a more exclusive kind of, of uh, graphic novel to attract different or new readers. I think that would be one of the things that you would think about in terms of publishing printed comments. And also, I think uh, Mac M, for example, did very well in terms of producing uh, uh, personal comics. Eh? There were a lot of uh, students and eh, school children put their product because of the educational quality of the comic. So meaning that you really to have identify your target. What are the things, what are the themes that they really like in terms of comic? So by doing that, market research, then I think you can move forward from there. Thank you, Sarah. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. yeah, it does. And I hope everyone takes tips from Professor Mladi today. Unfortunately, I am sad to announce that we are nearing the end of our webinar series this evening. We have received a lot of questions, and I thank every single one of you. And perhaps Professor Mladi can answer them next time? Sure, sure. There will be another session for me. <laughs> <laughs> Before ending the live, please allow Professor Muladi to say a few words. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for being patient, uh, listening to my 
journey. So as I mentioned before, I could not be here without the help of many people, you know, with the help of ITM, my teachers, my lecturers, my family, my wife, my friends, you know, cartoonists, artists, publishers, galleries. So Alhamdulillah, eh? thank you Allah and thank you uh, to everybody. Thank you for the organizing committee for inviting me to this session. Uh, thank you Dr. Lin, Dr. Razif, uh, Shera, the moderator, as well as the organizing committee. Thank you to the Dean Prof. Raz, eh? And uh, everybody actually uh, uh, join me in this session. I hope you did enjoy my presentation and hope that we could uh, meet again sometime in the future. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Muadi, and thanks everyone for participating. I would also want to share this quote that suits during this pandemic era. An American author, political activist, and lecturer Helen Keller once said, Although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of overcoming of it. Thank you, Professor Muladi Mahamud, for sharing and spending your time on a tribute. We already prepared some token for our honorary speaker. The token will be given later by Ms. Siti Nawara. Yes. We hope all the information you have retrieved from this webinar will be beneficial for all of you. We also hope that this program can inspire everyone watching. Thank you very much for joining our webinar. Have a nice day. Take care and be safe. Thank you.